Welcome to Grace Bible Church ProSide Online. How can we keep the promise of unfailing unity in life's most sacred relationships, including marriage and friendship? Pastor Norman Akanishi will take a fresh look on how successful relationships are based on something most people miss. Everybody say one. One is the number of unity and the scripture teaches that God commands the blessing where there is unity, not uniformity, but unity. And history teaches us this. History teaches us that the fall of civilizations, the fall of civilizations follows the failure of its marriages, its families, and its most internal core relationships. And this entire series we're going to talk about why it's important to be one, how we start and how we finish together wherever it's possible because sometimes you move geographically and life takes us to different corners of the planet. So we're gonna talk this morning as we start the series about flowing together in a world falling apart. How many of us know we do have a world constantly, history teaches us, that falls apart at the seams, at the edges, and sometimes at the center? But all of life really began with marriage. And so why marriage? How do we do marriage? God forges marriage and sacred relationships for this reason, to empower the fulfillment of his mission. I know that doesn't sound too romantic, but marriage is based not on personal passion and romance. It's actually built on mission. It's actually built on a life that will worship him. The very first relationship between two human beings were defined as marriage, Adam and Eve. And in the book of Genesis, you find the seed for every major doctrine and theological truth in scripture. And marriage is the genesis, the joining of that first human relationship. The Bible says the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. That was his mission. That was his assignment. And I mean, I mean you know, he didn't put Adam there just to have set up an easy chair and rock himself among the animals and the fruits and the vegetables. He was to work it and take care of it, and the Lord God commanded the man, you are, to, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. And the Lord God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. He created woman. Eve brought her to him. And listen, God brings us together in marriage, because that's where all of life began, human life. Not for us, but for him. And Eve was created and brought to the man to help him with the mission and the assignment. So if you want a successful marriage, we have to look, go back to see as to why a marriage, the first human relationship, was brought forth. Because so often in this world, we say marriage is for me. It's just Tom Cruise, right? Jumping up on a couch, Katie Holmes, forever. <laughs> Kim Kardashian. I am amazed. Sometimes by accident, I see their Twitter account. <laughs> and I go, you know, I've got X amount of followers, and they've got like uku millions. It's funny how we look at the wrong people to find the key to romance and relationships. What is it about them that intrigues us? If we want successful marriages and families and relationships, let's go to the Bible. Let's go to see what God says about it. And we have to go back to the foundation. Marriage is not based on our passion and romance. It's about our tie to him and our worship of him with him at the center and the mission he's called us to, the garden he's called us to. So God has put you together, husbands and wives, for a mission. You are not together for yourselves alone. Romance and passion, all of that has its place, but it is not the end in itself. I hate to disappoint you. Some of you came this morning thinking, Pastor Norman, the boy is so old and he's married been so long, he's gonna give us some marriage secrets. Deep, deep revelation. I just gave you it. So my question to you is, what is your mission? What is, where is your garden? Because God has someone for you. Well, if you're married, that's your person who's for you. <laughs> it's 
Sometimes you go, are you sure? <laughs> right? Are you absolutely sure? Now, someone suitable. God never lets our assignment on life go alone. Jesus sent them out by twos. So, as we live with God at the center, not us at the center, we have a mistaken notion sometimes that God has given us an entitlement of marriage to make us happy. That's not it. See, that's where marriages go wrong because it's self-centered and selfish. As we live with God at the center, he brings people together. So connection to God at the center will produce attractions from God. For Adam, no suitable helper was found. Scripture implies that he went through the animals. I had, this is incomprehensible to me. The gorilla, the giraffe, the elephant. How could he think that they could help him? But you read, that's how I read Scripture. Okay, for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So in other words, there was a search. There was no other human being. It was just Adam. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. Say deep sleep. Okay, this was really sleeping. It was deep, okay? And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. And then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man. He'd never seen this pers person before. This is a new creation. I want to make a comment here. I made it in the earlier service. God brought Eve, made Eve and brought her to Adam while he was at rest. And because he was at rest, he was in a deep sleep. He was not hunting and striving. and He wasn't dating. Who could he date? <laughs> I mean, you, you get the picture. So he was at rest. And for those of you that you're single here, and you know God does not want you to be alone. Don't be desperate, because desperate people do weird things. <laughs> then you put yourself at the center, and you have to have her. She has to have you. You can feel the vibe of desperate people. Women have tried to throw themselves towards me from elementary school. <laughs> you know, the first service did the same thing. I'm serious. And look, some of you have your own stories. You go, Pastor Norman, not just you. You should see all the people that wanted me inside my slang book, okay? Are you, what's a slang book? Okay, that shows you how old I am. I played that instrument to get myself partly through college. Drummers are not in the front. I stayed in the back. And I'm telling you, God has so wired us for relationships, even when it's not happening. People come at you. And I, I learned right there, I want the God attractions. When I came to Christ, I realized, wait a minute, the Bible says God's got an Eve for an Adam, so I want Eve. I don't want the gorilla isses. <laughs> I've been through that. I have fourth grade memories of Dixie Cabela's chasing me around. <laughs> if your name is Dixie, I'm sorry. It was lunchtime. I, th I think she interpreted food, uh, throwing of food as affection, and she came after me with a fork. <laughs> And I ran from her. People thought it was cute, but I was afraid for my life because she was twice my size. At least it looked like it. If people are desperate and they're running after you with the fork, run! <laughs> but if you're desperate, you're going to gain. Let me have you. You can have all of me. No, who's at the center if that's the case? You're at the center. Marriage is never based on us being in the center and our needs as an end, but it's to fulfill the cultivation of the garden of the mission God has for you. See that? That's how come a lot of people, their relationships fall apart because they're at the center. They're at the center. So the man said, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. I'm, far, I'm sorry for that commercial, but I intended to say it. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother as united to his wife, and they become one flesh. And I want to say this. I'm going to continue this thought later on. I said it to the earlier service. You know, parents, at some point, you've got to let go of your kids. Because your kids will have a, have a wife and a life of their own. They're not going to be married to you. They're married to your family, but they're not going to be married to you. We can't need our kids more than need, they need their independence. I'll leave that right there. Some of you look angry. <laughs> okay? And by the way, that's why sometimes our kids can't get married. Because those that would be candidates for our children as they get older and they get married, they look at their parents, they go, oh my God. <laughs> Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, Father's Day, Mother's Day with that. 
I don't think so. Okay, I'll leave it right there. Because that's a whole teaching right there, okay? You all right out there? Sl slap your neighbor and say, wake up, he's going to move on, okay? <laughs> Amen, it's important. So, I want to say this before we move on. So, if you're single here today, be at rest. The grind of life takes us out of rest. That's why Jesus said, all you that heavy are, 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 you're pressured, you're weighted down, you're heavy laden, come to me and I will give you rest. We sometimes connect with God at the center. We disconnect because we get busy. We get stressed. That's why we need the discipline of that daily devotion. We, 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 we read the Bible, put the word of God into our lives. We spend quiet time with him. We get re-centered and we keep Jesus at the center. He is the source. We don't run on the edge with all our busyness and have a mental concept of God. No, we keep the fires burning. We keep Jesus at the center. And when we're at rest, guess what? God attractions come. When I got together with Fia, I wasn't trying to get married. See, when you try too hard to hook up with somebody, I don't care if it's a business partnership that you need, a marriage, a courtship, a friendship, when you're needy, it's probably because the Lord's not at the center. Because when, when the Lord's at the center, he puts you to sleep, you're at rest, come to me, I will give you rest, and when you're at rest, he does the work. By his grace, he draws people. He does that. And I told this to the evening service. I said, oh, well, how do you want to be married? Because almost all of them are single. They raised their hands. I said, go to sleep. <laughs> go to sleep. It was Father's Day last year, Bill, you know. Both, both servers had a lot of fun. I said, go to sleep. Everybody sleep because some of you are on the Buddha hunt right here. And people can tell when you're like, where's she stay? Where he's sitting? Oh, I heard him cough. <laughs> right? We all been there. Well, who's at the center? Who is really at the center? He brings people together for his mission. My wife wanted to marry a minister. Most of you are going, oh, I don't want my kids to marry a minister, no more money. Yeah. Right? I want, I want them to love Jesus but be rich and famous. Come on. So, that's a God attraction. I won't bore you with the stories of the past, how men were attracted to her and, you know, this wasn't happening. <laughs> but God has a way of putting you together when you're at rest. And some of you, you may be striving about certain strategic relationships you need to move forward in the goals for your life. Be at rest. Put, leave the Lord at the center. Keep coming to him and say, Lord, work it. I'm laying all my heart out before you. But I want to be like, it, like Adam. I want to be at rest. I want to be in, a, in sleep. But you know what? Sometimes we're at sleep and we want the Lord to work, but we're peaking. We're not. It's deep sleep, baby. <laughs> Slap your neighbor and say, be a deep sleep, but not now. <laughs> and God knows when you're at rest and he can work. That's how he brings people together. And the way he brings us together is the way we stay together. Folks, the way we stay, because life is a grind. And guess what? From the original man and woman, we find the devil, whose place would be taken, theologians say, by the creation of man and woman. Because the devil was the archangel in heaven next to the Godhead and the Trinity. He was. Lucifer, Satan, was the man. But he wanted to be like God. His ego got the better of him. When God said, I'm going to create man and woman, guess who takes that place? It's us. When we come to Christ, so the devil has targeted you and your wife, your family from the beginning of time. That is why marriage is so challenged in every country, in every civilization. The fall of a civilization was preceded by the failure of its marriages. You say, well, family, family, family. Family is based on marriage. And God has attacked it in the state of Hawaii. 19 states now, marriage is being redefined in our country. You know what history shows us? When that happens full scale, it's only a matter of time before that country falls. Because marriage is the greatest picture of our relationship with Jesus Christ that there is. In fact, God created marriage to remind us of the intimacy he wants us to have with him. We forget that. So we need covering because there will be demonic attack. In fact, right here, gov covering is needed to redeem us from relational division and demonic destruction. What happened to, e to, to e Adam? Had Eve, we don't know how long they walked together in the garden. Full, this was the paradise. He said, you could have any tree, mango tree, papaya tree, banana tree, if there's such a thing. You can have, you can have of any tree, but there's this one tree, Adam, 
Before Eve ever was, he, ex- he ex- explained to Adam, that, but there's this one tree, it's in the middle. Why in the middle? <laughs> Watch out for that tree. <laughs> and so Eve came along. And Eve was like, Let, let's just say this. This, gotta say, this is what Scripture said. Eve was enticed. She was tempted. She looked. She went, she got close. Adam didn't prevent her. Adam didn't say anything. Then she went from looking, then she went from touching. She went to buying, like Kalai. <laughs> then she went eating. <laughs> you bought what you shouldn't have bought. Yes, see? She, she ate what she shouldn't have ate. And then, and then. So, so Adam's not covering her. That was his responsibility. He was covering up for her. There was no truth here. And all of a sudden, they defy the will of God, and Eve goes, honey, it's so good. Take a bite. And Adam goes, that's good. He went, no, I'm like, that's what Adam should have done. And Adam, courageous, creation of God, the first human, goes, ah, good. And we have paid for it ever since. Sin was imputed. We have inherited a depraved nature. The consequences were death, where eternal life would have been the gift for all of us. Hard labor and suffering and childbirth, among other things. It started with a look. It's, it progressed with the approach and the touch and the bite. And all along, Adam should have taken responsibility to cover and protect his wife from demonic intrusion. And that's speaking the truth. That's saying the hard thing. Why didn't Adam do it? We've said this before. Someplace along the way, he got so enthralled with the gift of his wife who was from God, she replaced God at the center. It's like so many humans today. We perform for each other when we're so enthralled with each other, we're afraid to lose each other. But I would suggest to you this, who was Adam gonna lose Eve to anyway? The gorilla? <laughs> the elephant? We don't need another option. He was just so caught up with, uh, let me say this, a form of idolatry where she replaced God. He had walked with God for eons of time. There was unbroken fellowship, they were one. And then when God made Eve out of his rib, they were one. And all of a sudden, one became three because Scripture says, instead of him covering her, they sewed fig leaves together and they covered up. When the woman saw that the, tr- fruit, of the, tree, the, the, the fruit of the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eye, and also desi- desired for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her. And he ate it. And then the eyes of both of them were open. Then they realized they were naked. And so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Let me just, you know, this is the thought here. So not, not only were they running from God, they knew. All of a sudden, they were one. Now they're hiding from each other. Think about that. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He knew. It's kind of like a statement, where are you in your heart to me? What happened? I heard you in the garden, Adam says, and I was afraid because I was naked, and so I hid. Hmm. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? And the man said, the woman, the woman playing the victim, casting, the woman, her, she, the woman you, God, gave me. In other words, if you hadn't made her and she wasn't in my life, we'd be fine. This was, are you following me? Yeah, yeah I, th- I think it's real quiet because you've done that. It's her, God, the woman you gave me. That's a come we have this problem with Charlie, our son, right? We play victim. The woman you you, the woman you gave out, then she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. She gave the fruit to me. But I think God would say to him, why didn't you stop her? You were one. You're supposed to protect her. The devil was coming in in the form of the serpent. And then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? Because she was also culpable and responsible. And the woman said, the serpent. Was it me? It was him. 
was it. The serpent deceived me and I ate. The disconnection from God caused him to hide from responsibility. And victim Midas took over. It wasn't owning up, it was covering up. And that's how relationships begin to fracture. This is exactly how relationships begin to fracture. But the, you know, scripture is important. Scripture is very, very clear. God is very merciful. The Lord, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Let me explain this. Pretty much, the law of heaven, as in Leviticus and in Hebrews says, remission of sin comes through the shedding of blood. Jesus had not come yet, obviously, but the type of the slaying of an animal and the shed blood of, from, from animal sacrifice would point in type prophetic shadow to the coming of Christ as the lamb slain for the sins of the world. 4,000 years later. See, in the Old Testament, we look ahead to the coming of the Messiah. New Testament, we weren't there. We look back to the cross. It's all by faith. And so what happened here is God said, look, fig leaves, stuff you do to cover up your sin and make yourself righteous, that don't work. I'm going to kill an animal. The garments of skin, because it's the product of shed blood for the remission of sin, will cover you, and that's my covering. I'm covering you. You're covering up for one another. You're trying to cover yourself. That don't work. But God's master plan would not be thwarted. Marriage would continue. Life would ensue. And God covered through a sacrifice. And it's the same thing with us. We can always start again. We can always, always start over. Eve was deceived, but Adam was responsible because Adam was instructed before Eve ever was made. You have run of the whole garden except that tree. Watch out for that tree. That's the tree. Adam did not prevent his wife from going there. And I would suggest to you because all of a sudden the Lord wasn't at the center anymore. And how is it so much sometimes when we get blessed by God, pretty soon our marriages become an end of itself, but the mission of God and the garden of his assignment escapes. I see so often people leave church when life gets good. They leave the Lord when life gets good. We don't see them in grace group anymore. We don't see them reaching and sharing their faith anymore because suddenly God has all ab become all about, he's become a utilitarian God who exists for our happiness to make us successful. And we don't start that way. The American culture shapes us to feel like we're entitled. God bless America. God bless me. And all of a sudden we move from we exist for God and his purposes and we shift over to God exists for me and my purposes. And it's a subtle click. It's a journey of a warped gospel. And I don't know about you. If you're married, anytime our marriages are stressed, anytime our marriages are challenged, we should look, are we, have we bought into the American gospel or the biblical gospel? And that's why Jesus said, come to me. When the light, grind of life gets to you, keep coming to me. Keep being in prayer. Talk to me. Spend time with me. Spend time in my word, my love letter. And that's how Jesus stays centered. I've been married 34 years. It's been rough sometimes. I'm not easy to live with a lot of times. I got a revelation. Neither are you. It's the grace of God. When God attract, attracts two people together, the devil will attack it. The enemy will come after your marriage and your children. Because remember, we are his eternal replacement. We have the position Lucifer. We will have it that Lucifer once has. And he will, and hell will not hold back with a fury. That's why marriage is a spiritual joining. We need to keep Jesus at the center because only his covering can protect and redeem us. This is not a series about marriage techniques and relational principles. That's important. It will be in it. But we got to remember the premise is the center is Jesus put two people on the earth to create the human race and it was defined as marriage. And our marriages are the illustration of our relationship to Christ. We are his church, the bride. He is the groom. Scripture te teaches that over and over and over again. Now, how does that work? My, I, I, you, we're all here to share our faith. We're all here to share the God who put us together with others. And I've shared this before. One of the best ways, one of the, the, one of the most credible foundations I have is that 
I have a marriage that lasts 34 years. When I see my friends from high school and college, they think that's the miracle. Because they say, how, how does that happen? And what do I do? I could hide Jesus at that point. I could go, oh, lucky. If I am afraid of what they think about me and my relationship with Christ, I'll hide him. But we're here to share him. That's our garden. The garden is the world. The field are people far from God. And guess what I always do? I say, well, it's God. And then they find out I'm a minister and they almost like they back off like you're a vampire. I tell them, no, it's, it's, it's the Lord. I tell you, because listen, Faye and I, we fight. 34 years, it's been rough, but guess what? It's because he put us together and we have his word. We have the grace to stay together, finish together. And through the fight, you get deeper. How many of you fought with your spouses? Okay, raise both hands and a foot. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, if you don't fight, you can't come from two big different backgrounds and be different genders and smile your way through 34 years. It's a false peace. And at some point, something will rear its ugly head because you're performing. You're performing. That's why God didn't want the cover-up with Adam and Eve. They, they, that's what we do when, when our relationships are failing and flailing. We make fig leaves. And that, we look cool, huh? The world is walking around like this. Tom, Cruise, Kim, Kardashian. We think it's cool. We cover up. It's his fault. It's them. It's the devil. It's her. It's him. No, God says, it's me. Put me at the center. I put you on the earth. And there's a mission and a garden of assignment. Let me put you together. But listen, if you make you the end of all things, it will fail. My wife and I are together to share the gospel. You, if you who are married, your goal cannot be the happiness of wonderful trips and dinners and candlelight moments and visit the grandkids and rock in your chair and make multiple investments. That is not why you're here. That's not why marriage is. You say, well, we're fine right now. Well, guess what? Tomorrow's coming. And the very real devil knows at what place he hides to launch an attack on your marriage, on your family, on your business, on your health, on your relationship. But what looks really great can look really bad around the corner in a couple weeks or a couple years. He says, no, it doesn't happen to me. We're fine. The enemy knows. He knows when the time is attack, when you're most vulnerable because he has been studying you. But greater than that is God. And when we stay connected with him and he's at the center, guess what? We're, we're, we always know. When you're attacked, you always know. He's, you, you can feel him. You can sense him. And you can say, in the name of Jesus, stop that. I rebuke you. Back off. You don't just take the fruit and go, oh, it's good. And some of you, maybe you're there. You, you, you know, it's commitment. It is. We're going to close with this. We start by obeying the commands of God. We come to Christ. There's a gush of that initial rush of, oh, Jesus is everything. But then life grinds on us. And we understand there's commitment. Our marriages, we, we have to choose to stay committed. Isn't that right? I mean, love is not emotions. A lot of people said, Tom and Katie forever. I, as soon as I saw him jump on the couch, I went, they're, they're done. I saw that interview by accident. <laughs> and I went, you, whether it's a Kim Kardashian, well, you, you name your celebrity out there, right? There's a real misconception of what love and marriage and romance is that defies scripture. God is love and his word is the love manual. And so, for this reason, for this reason, Scripture says, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. This reason, the two will become one flesh. This is a problem for problem mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. Husband and wife, Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Here's the picture. Jesus is the groom. We are the bride. And the marriages that we have picture that union, the ultimate union. Adam and Eve. Norman and Faye, Billy and Naomi, Tim and Blanco, Matt and whoever will be, Paris and Twinkle, Twinkle. 
That's not an end in itself. It's to cultivate the garden of his mission and to get the message of his love through the world. You know, commitment's, commitment's huge. When we become his, we have his power to finish. Scripture says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Power. When we receive him, we have his power not only to choose him, start with him, but to finish. When Faye and I were at the altar 34 years ago, you have that moment where the pastor goes, and so do you, Faye, take this man, Norman, to be your old school vows, to be your lawfully wedded husband, leaving all others in adversity, in prosperity, in sickness, and in health, for better or for worse, till death, do you part? Do you take this man? And she stood there, and I waited in actual suspense <laughs> as she, for the longest time, she just, let me think about it, not really. But folks, that's how serious it is. And we, we knew for 34 years through our struggles, we could always go back to did God say did God put us together or did we put ourselves together did I impress her with the shine and the anointing with the moves <laughs> huh? with the jumping on the couch with the bling and the things no I had nothing all I had was him and we've had to dial our marriage back to zero so many times I said whose fault is this God put us together and that's what's kept us together Look, don't look at me weird. The marriage hasn't been torture, okay? So, yeah, that, that marriage, oh my God, okay? But think about the vows in sickness and in health, for better or for worse, in adversity and prosperity. It sounds like a funeral dirge. But that's reality because the devil will attack your most prized relationships. You, no one here is exempt. Whether you know Jesus or not, you're a target. The devil comes to destroy you, and we are here as part of our mission to destroy, Scripture says clearly, the works of the devil. And that's why he puts Adam and Eve together. It's not good for a man to be alone. Man needs a helpmate. Jesus sent him out by twos. And God has someone for you. If you're here and you're single, go to deep sleep. Let the God attraction happen. Don't be hunting, don't be striving. Just keep the Lord at the center. And for those of us that are married, keep him at the center. Because it's so easy when life goes good to put him to the side. I'll leave you with this video. It's gone viral. A few years ago, Ian and Larissa Murphy were a darling, drop-dead, handsome couple till something happened. A picture's worth a thousand words, but we have, for those of you who have seen the first half, an update. Take a look. Ian and I first met in 2005 at college and had a blast for 10 months getting to know each other and I was looking through and I found one of my favorite pictures which I think was actually taken right before his accident. He set up a camera on his, his tripod and it's just a classic Ian face that to me sums up who he is. We had been dating for 10 months and he was working an extra job for his dad and he was on his way to work near Pittsburgh and we got a phone call that he had been in an accident and we didn't know if it was when he got to work or on his way. And so we got down to Pittsburgh and I was just praying the whole time in the car that it wouldn't be his brain. After being at the hospital for a few hours, we found out that it was and he had been in brain surgery for a few hours and had suffered a traumatic brain injury. God totally spared his life. Uh. One night he was failing four out of five brain activity tests and the next morning, he was doing well, and his brain was starting to respond again. I moved in with his family after the accident, so I was really involved in his therapy and just did whatever I could to make his life fun. We'd go out on dates, and looking back, it's weird because he couldn't talk and he couldn't eat. So we probably looked like complete weirdos being on dates, but we had a blast, and I just talked to him all the time. I knew that before Ian's accident, he was very serious about marriage and was ring shopping. So I knew where he was and that helped me so much. After he couldn't talk, I knew that he loved me and I knew where he wanted the relationship to go because we were dating very intentionally. 
We just prayed that marriage would someday happen and watched all of our friends get married and start having families. That was challenging, but we just tried to hold out hope that that would be us someday. This is our board of gratefulness, and we encourage anybody who comes in to write a note of something they're thankful for. It could be really small. Mine is just Saturday mornings, and it's just a good way that we found to be just practicing gratefulness. And Ian, I think half of yours say <laughs> my wifey, <laughs> which is pretty cool. <laughs> We decided that we couldn't really consider marriage as an option until Ian was able to communicate. But if he could communicate with me, then we could have a marriage, knowing it would be really different. But as long as Ian could talk to me, then we could make it work. So once Ian began communicating, it became a little bit more of an option. And then we just kind of watched Ian progress. Uh, Hi, husband. Uh, I like me. How are you? Uh, yeah, yeah. What? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 How was your day? Yeah. Yeah. I think what helped us in deciding to make this commitment to each other, at least for me, is knowing that Ian wouldn't have left me if the roles were reversed and that we love each other and we know that God's going to be faithful to our marriage. We're able to love each other with, I think, a more Christ-like love because of Ian's disability and just understand that picture a little bit better than if you were healthy. Yeah. Do you agree? Yes. What about God enables you to have, have a happy marriage? You know. What? He's awesome. He's awesome? Yeah. It's been three years since the video came out, and over those three years, God has done a lot in our marriage and continues to heal Ian, and we just get to keep seeing him at work in our lives. It's been a my one. I feel really good to be one myself. He's gone from using a walker and two people helping him to now being able to just hold on to the parallel bars by himself at therapy. It's really amazing, and God has brought him so far. It means the world to me. Oh, my God, I would be out in my way to watch. What's a way you've seen God help us in our marriage? I'm trying to do you. <laughs> <laughs> and you really thought you'd need help with that? <laughs> <laughs> no. I hear you again. I saw him more clearly when I had gone in with you. We've been given the opportunity to write a book which has been a very interesting adventure for us, sharing our story from meeting to getting engaged to getting married. And we're really excited to have the opportunity to just share all that God has done in our lives. Riveting, isn't it? I would tell Tom Cruise and Kim Kardashian and others, that's what love looks like. That's marriage. And let's break this down. I think that they're thriving because it's, they realize it started with Jesus and it's not about them, it's about Him. And because of that, there's a grace of commitment, a deep abiding love that mo many of us can't relate to. But also, they're writing a book, they've allowed this video to go viral and created the message because they realize their story must express the gospel story that this example of Christ-like love must go to people far from God. And many people have come to Jesus Christ for the first time, repaired their marriages, 
Those who've fallen away have restored their walk simply because they realize the garden of the world needs to hear the message of their marriage through Christ. We can't hide him, folks. Our marriages do not exist to be a romantic, self-serving movie. We are brought together for much that which is much larger than that. Successful marriages and friendships go way beyond just us. It must go to the world. Ian and Larissa, the book will probably be a New York Times bestseller. It's not about the money. It's about the gospel. It's about Jesus because they've kept him at the center.